Hey everybody, welcome to the Catholic Influencers Podcast extended interview for season 12, episode 7. So happy you made your way to this video. I'm Augie Angrisano and this season I've had the opportunity to interview remarkable individuals from around the world, hearing their stories and letting them give us their reflections on the gospel for the week. So this week the gospel is Mark 9, 30 to 37. And for an in-depth discussion, make sure you go listen to that full episode with Alyssa Justine and Father Rob. It's available on all platforms now, but let's get into it. Our guest today is Kayla Nalus, a Catholic school teacher here in Sydney. She shares a personal tragedy that kind of happened in her life and how she has used that experience to help others cope with grief. So let's welcome Kayla to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, not a problem at all. We're so thankful for you spending your time. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, who is Kayla? What was it like growing up? Uh, what was your faith like as a child? Uh, just bring us in to the story. Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Kayla. I'm 32 years old and I'm from Sydney, Australia. Um, I'm a mum of, I've got one beautiful boy named Isaac. He's four. He's mm -hmm. five next month. Yeah. Um, and I'm married to my wonderful husband named Elias. Um, mm. I'm a Catholic school teacher. Um, and I, I I've been teaching for 10 years now. Um, so it's been, yeah, I've always dreamed to be a school teacher and I've always dreamed to be a Catholic school teacher because I've just had this, you know, fire that, that's just wanting to spread that news to the young children. So mm. thank God I, I prayed for that vocation and that was part of God's plan for me. So yeah, it's been 10 years teaching in a Catholic school. Um, my family life, I grew up in a big Maltese family um, and I am married I, to a Maltese woman so oh, I know you? yes yes I am I didn't yeah. even know that Malta was a country when I lived uh, in America yeah, and this, yeah. is there many Maltese there in America none none I yeah. met the, but now I work for one and I'm married yeah. to one so I'm very accustomed yeah. you know a lot about how our, you know how family life works yeah. like um just very um supportive very loving we're just there for each other in good times and bad like I grew up every Sunday at my nunna's house which is my grandmother's house and mm. all our cousins would get together and would all play together and we would pray together as well so my grandmother would is the foundation of the pillar of faith in yeah. our family um and if it was you know she spoke about how prayer got her through World War II wow. when Malta was being bombed. And every time we would go to Nunna's house, she would just talk about how Our Lady, you know, um, protected her country and protected her from the bombs in World War II. And wow. she, she taught us how to pray the rosary and how to, she took us to um, prayer days and she just honestly like taught us how to read the Bible and, and taught us about wow. the stories. Beautiful. So, my the, my pillar of faith and was because like was because of her it stemmed from her wow. um yeah so i came i was blessed to come from such a strong religious family and um growing up it was hard um i struggled a little bit i you know um didn't know jesus i didn't find the purpose of prayer i didn't know you know like well what's the point of praying of got everything I wanted anyway, like, you know, it was just took things for granted. Um, mm. it, I went to church every Sunday, I guess, because mum was like, you need to go to church or like, mm. there's no ifs or buts, you need to go. Mm. So I kind of back then was, yeah, we'll just go. And, and there was no purpose to it. Just get it done. Um, up until I guess my real story began in, and we'll probably get to that a little bit later on um, right. after I got married. but. I was, like I said, like I'll reiterate that I was blessed to have such a beautiful um, family that are really strong um, hearted in their faith. So that really. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, it sounds like you had a loving environment and that your grandmother just really like shared that faith and passed that faith down for you. You know, Honestly, she's a living saint. Oh, she's she still is. alive. Oh, great. That's amazing. Honestly, honestly, she is the most uh, oh, godly woman and. Yeah, I, I, she has so much faith yeah. and yeah, she's done so much for her family. She's such a strong woman. So God bless her. Oh, praise. That's so good. Well, you were saying in your, um, in your story that although you were going to church and your grandmother was, had this beautiful faith, you struggled to find uh, kind of like a personal relationship. So what was the next 
milestone in your life? What was it that, that led you to a relationship with God? Was it, was it getting married? Uh, what, what exactly was it that changed? It wasn't even that. It was, it was just, it was, everything was falling into place. So I was like, yeah, life's sweet, you know, like got no worries. Uh-huh. You know, I thank God I fell pregnant with Isaac easily. And um, my story began in 2020. Um, so I'll start, I'll start off with my story and this was during COVID time. Um, and I decided to set up a Instagram page, mm-hmm. um, and it was, it's called underscore living on grace. And my Instagram, I was just like, what can I do? I'm stuck at home. I'm, I'm home like homeschooling all my students. How can I give hope to those people that are un, like unsure about the world today? I'm sure about this disease. Like mm. how, what can I do at home to bring Jesus to them. Like, and we're at home, we're doing nothing. I need to pray more. People need to pray more. People need to explore the Bible. People need to explore Catholic and Christian music. Like that's a big thing for me. Mm. So I started off with this Instagram page. I started off um, rosary groups with my students and, you know, I was like, yeah, okay, this is going good. But, but something, the pivotal moment in my faith was last year. Mm -hmm. Last year, I um, fell pregnant with twin girls, Gianna and Isabel. And um, I was like, oh, this is great. Like, it took me a while to fall pregnant with them, I'm being honest. Um, I had endometriosis. I had to have some surgery. Um, and I'm like, finally, I fell pregnant with twins. And this is God giving it t- two girls to me. You know, I was just overwhelmed by the joy, you know, in my life. Um mm. And I got hit at 10 weeks with the news that these girls um, developed something called twin to twin transfusion syndrome. Because they were identical twins, they were feeding off one placenta. Mm. Um, so one of my, one Gianna was a smaller twin. She wasn't getting as much food as Isabel. Um, so we did lots of um, lots of ultrasounds, lots of testing, lots of. There's a, even a surgery I had to do at 17 weeks while I was awake and. Wow. The professor had to do a surgery with the two girls. But um, unfortunately, on the 21st of May last year, I lost my twin girls. Um, and that was, that's my pivotal faith moment. Um, oh, yeah. man. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. That was um, very sour lemonade. Sounds like you got Yeah, handed, thank you, you so know. much. And um I, I have to, my, my testimony is not finished yet, Augie. I'm mm. still writing it. Yeah. But I, I have to say, and I have to just let people know that I felt this un, un, overpowering strength and peace in my heart as soon as I lo- lost my girls. Like, I buried my ch- children. Of mm. course, I have my days where I'm upset, but I cannot explain to you where this strength came from. Mm. I'm shaking because I'm just, like, I felt it's it's over, it's I've got no words. Yeah. Yeah. I've got no words. Um, So it took a while for me, like, like people would ask me like, Oh, you actually, you seem okay. I thought, you know, you'd be worse. And I thought, Oh, like what is happening? I I feel actually okay. And I'd go to my Bible and I'd read and all of that. Like Jesus promises the abundant life. But again, he had to be crucified to get that life. And to, to me, it's like, well, maybe that like, I had to I have to go through this suffering in order to get to that abundant life or to get to heaven or something. I don't know. I was still trying to figure it out. Mm. Mm. Um, so I you know, would dive deeper in the Bibles and I would listen to, to Christian podcasts. And then my Instagram page from that just blew up because I started being open about grief and tying grief in with, well, having joy that, my angels, my little girls are with God and with Jesus. And yeah. I just got a humongous response from women all around the world to say, wow, you've just given me hope that, number one, we will see our, our babies again. And number wow. two, that, that they're with Jesus. So um, there's two, yeah, like the Instagram and the grief have come together now. And, and my Instagram page is really just blown up because it's turned into how to cope with grief, especially I really want to target pregnancy and inf- infant loss because I feel like it's getting better, but we normally don't talk about it. Man, well, sounds like you're still grieving. So thank you for sharing. And, um, you know, I know you're hurting and I know you would give anything to take the hurting away. 
Um, but it is. It's, it's a mystery that somehow through this pain, and it's very real, but God's using it to help others in, in, in their pain. And it is. It's very mysterious. And it's not till you're at your lowest of lows that you can really feel it. You have to be like, God, I've got nothing else to give. And I and I and I'm learning now. I can't take control of things. Mm. I can't go and you know I'm going to go see the best professor and and the best doctor and take the best medicines because in the end it's God's plan. It's God's whatever God wants. So so I'm learning now. I, I have to surrender everything, and you have to be open to to these messages and signs. And and Augie, I do. I get like I'll get signs and little things, and I think, yep, thanks God, that's God, or that might be my girls and. You have to be open to these things. So I'm a completely different person after what happened to me last year. And of course, I'm still grieving and I'm a mother and I do have my sad days. But I have to say, and I can testify that I've never been as closer to God than I am now after going through this. And it's my cross that I have to carry, but I'm using my platform of Instagram to help other grieving mums um, go through the loss of, of their child or their you know, their um, pregnancy. I mean, for you to share your grief to help others in theirs is just really beautiful. And I, and I love whenever I see like Catholic families, they'll be like, how many kids do you have? And they'll be like, I have eight kids, but I actually have five. There's Amber and they, you know, they, they, they passed away really young. And, and that's just so inspiring. And what you're doing is like, you're remembering your, you're remembering your child. Um, you know, they're remembering the, their child. And, and by you remembering yours, like you're helping others love and remember their case scenario. And that's as a mom, and, and that's what I have, I feel like I have to do. I have to keep their memory alive. And, you know, even in my house, you could probably see behind me, I've got, you know, their shelf for them. Um, you know, pictures of, I put pictures online, like, you know, just of, of their statue that I've got a beautiful monument of their, on their grave of Jesus holding two babies. And I post that up because cool for people to in see the that. end, they're my children, you know, yeah, and I don't, I can't push that aside and just forget, forget them. Some people push their grief aside, but, but not me. I, I want to make them known. And, and I want other, other parents to know that it's okay to, to speak about that child that you lost. Don't feel afraid and don't feel embarrassed because that's a, that's your child. Yeah. Oh, that's that's beautiful. How has this changed you? If you don't mind me asking. I mean, I know again, you know, it's it's a situation you would not have organically asked for. But um, you know, how has this changed your relationship with your husband? Um what doors are opening for you to just speak to people and love people or um I don't know, you know, like what's what what, what is the fruit? What's been what, what has changed from just, you know, growing and, and not letting that kill you, you know, that experience kill you. You kept going. Um, so I have spent the last, the, this year, the last six, seven months really working on surrendering everything to God. Um, I was, I'm a very much a control, like I want to control everything. I want to do everything possible to, um, you know, fix things and do things and make me better and, and make things better. But we have to learn if it's not if if it's not in line with God's plan, it's not going to happen. And I'm not saying that what it, what happened with the girls, you know, yeah. that's it's it's a hard concept it to understand. It's but I'm just complex. saying that it changed me. And maybe it was maybe what happened happened, but it allowed me to help and outreach other people through my Instagram page. So I guess. And coming back to that question, it's changed me because I'm just learning to surrender everything, not take control. Um, but I want to encourage other people as well, like to go through them. I'm, I'm a, like on my Instagram platform, I'm available to have a chat. I'll put Beautiful. up Bible quotes every day about, you know, following God's plan or about grief or about having hope that one day we're going to see them again. And and like I said to you, I'll get people messaging me saying look Kayla like that quote today really spoke to my heart and you don't understand the impact that this quote has had on me today or mm -hmm. I've had people like you know your quotes saved me from you know doing something that is unimaginable and it's and you don't realize the impact of one picture or one quote so wow how impactful are powerful. words <laughs> you know and just choosing the right ones they're very important um, and it can do a lot of good and it yeah. can do a lot of harm. Yeah, and that's right. 
But yeah, definitely. And I also, what I do is I, I choose some images that, that I feel people can relate to. So I've got a, a whole heap of images on my page, whether it be Jesus holding some babies or um, Jesus in the clouds with ba- with, with kids, with babies, or just Jesus hugging a mum that is crying. Because sometimes we just, all we want to do is close our eyes and just hug Jesus. Like, yeah, that's like... That's, you know, all, all we feel, we feel him around us. We just want to give him a big hug and ask questions for him. But it's just these photos that people can relate to in their everyday lives or you might speak to them in a way that just provides them with some sort of, some sort of comfort or peace in their heart that helps them go on with their grief process. Okay, I wasn't going to ask this question, but now that I know more about you and I know that you're an educator, I thought I'd just go for it. Yeah. Um, ask me. What are your thoughts on just the Catholic education space, maybe in Australia specifically, because that's where you work. Um, what are we doing well? What are we not doing well to pass the faith down to students? And you know, you're in it. You know, you're you're in the thick of it, day in, day out. You know, on site. So, what's it like? It's a big question. Um, I think the faith in adults. I don't know. I, I'm I'm quite. I, I, it's, it's it's a hard question because. There are a lot of young teachers that still don't know Jesus or still don't know how to teach about Jesus that in a way to get to children in terms of how, how do we how do we teach about Jesus or I'm going to talk about music because this is how I bring my my students to get to know Jesus through music. I am a massive for King and Country fan. Nice. Massive. Yeah. I love them. Yeah. And I start playing their songs every day in my classroom during religion. They're like, Miss, is this about Jesus? This is too cool. (laughs) Right. (laughs) They just think that it's like, you know, like, and I'm not saying like church music, but, you know, like the keyboard music and things like that. They're like, oh, you know, we need to change it up a little bit. That's what I'm trying to push for. I'm trying to push for just like the modern day Christian music, um, the the way we we need to change our religion lessons, some Bible devotions, unpacking the Bible, self reflection questions. Yeah, we need modern ways to communicate the same message, you know, the the gospel message, and uh, you know, just make it make it new and make it fresh and make it exciting. And, and people love stories. We need to tell more stories using the modern mediums. I don't know, just bringing all that into the into the Catholic Church, but then into Catholic schools as well, instead of the old way of, you know, like reading a Bible verse and what does this mean and what's the message of the story. So, I mean, the curriculum I find, I don't know, I, I kind of tweak it and, and change it to suit my... I feel like this is the exact point where Father Rob would just make me, like, want me to just do like an encounter courses ad, you know, right here, encounter courses subscription. Yeah. Uh, but sorry, I don't mean to be disrespectful. Uh, like, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Do you have anything else to say about that? No, I just think like like more professional development around in, in, figuring out who we are as teachers um, and how we can build a closer relationship with Jesus. Um, and I think I think with the pressures of like marking and all the admin work that we need to do as teachers, sometimes we forget we are Catholic school teachers and we need to be focusing on more time on prayer, more time on reflection. And, hey, let's play that for King and Country song. Like, you, I told you, I have to tell you this story. In the last day of school, they're all like, Miss, can we play um, It's Not Over Yet? I don't know if you know that song from... Oh, uh, yeah, I know it. I, all I know is it's got a crazy drop. That's oh, that's what that's I remember. Amazing. So <laughs> the kids were just like pump like it's a wor- it was like a worship session at school yeah and everyone's looking at us like what's happening then they're just worshiping through song so bringing that modern christian music into the classroom it's just so engaging for them because they just love they love listening to music that's what they do when they get home and i'm like hey why not play some for king and country or why not look listen to ren collective or father rob galea <laughs> Uh, well, you're preaching to the choir here. Uh, I might be sending you some Christian hip hop uh, artists at some oh, point so you can show your okay. students that. I feel like Christian hip hop has just elevated and it's actually the best oh, rap okay. around at the moment. <laughs> and so people are, even athletes, NBA yeah. players and everything, they're, they're choosing love CHH, that. Christian hip hop over the radio. I know, I love that. And if the kids know about like the NBA, like the basketball players that are listening to that, they're going to be more, you know, excited to listen. So that's, that's, what, that's how you got to get them 
Yeah. yeah, I don't I don't think people realize how big of a deal it is to have NBA players listening to Christian hip hop music and how that's going to really impact the genre and make it a part of the culture. Um, but hey, let's I could talk about that forever. Let's let let's dive to the gospel. I would love to um, transition to that the gospel for the week. Um, you know what what really stood out to you personally? Um. I'm just looking at that last verse in the gospel passage, which says, um, whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And I think we forget to have a close look at the um, how little children act and their innocence. Um, and I think we need to learn to become more like the little children. Um, and, you know, like they just live life the way it is. They're not stressing over the little things and, you know, being able to walk, they welcome everybody and they're just so over, over, you know, loving and caring. So I think um, we kind of go past them and just think of them as little kids that they don't know nothing. But being able to welcome, welcome little children is out, like welcoming everybody and being like little children, but also welcoming God into your life too. Thank you so much, Kayla, for your time today. I pray that everyone enjoyed listening to our conversation. Hope to have you back sometime. No nice to meet you as well thank you so much for having me all right everybody thank you so much for watching please like and subscribe so my boss is happy with me and for a detailed explanation of this week's gospel go listen to the full episode of the catholic influencers podcast on all platforms and you can visit catholicinfluencerspodcast.com for links to our social media we all look forward to seeing you next week